Your breastfeeding journey can be unpredictable at times. You might feel very confident and prepared when you leave the hospital, but start having difficulties at home, or you might leave the hospital feeling like you're still not ready. These feelings are common and totally normal. Our goal is to give you an idea of what to expect so you feel as prepared as possible in your first few days of breastfeeding. This video will cover feeding times, how to tell if you're making enough milk, why babies might act hungry when you lay them down, what to do about very full breasts, when formula might be needed, and when to ask for help. Your baby will likely want to feed very frequently at first, averaging eight to 12 feedings per day. In other words, you can expect a period of two to three hours from the start of one feeding to the start of the next. Babies often want to nurse over and over for a few hours in a row, which is called cluster feeding. It may seem like you're feeding your baby all day long because of the short breaks between feedings. You may feel exhausted, but it is normal. We will review cluster feeding in more detail in a future video. You might find yourself wondering whether your baby is getting enough milk. Initially, your baby will only take small amounts of milk per day. The first milk that your body will make, called colostrum, is yellow in color and thick like honey. It contains all of the nutrients your baby will need for the first day or two of life. The more your baby nurses, the sooner your more mature milk will come in. This milk is whiter in color and usually appears around day three or four of breastfeeding. The best way to tell whether your baby is getting enough milk is by watching their weight. Your pediatrician or WIC office can check to make sure your baby is gaining weight. Some weight loss in the first week is normal, but your baby should get back up to their birth weight by two weeks. Other signs that your baby is getting enough milk include poop changing from black and sticky to green and then yellow by day four or five. Baby is calm and relaxed after most feedings. Your breasts feel softer after feedings. Baby stops sucking or lets go of the breast on their own. Your nipple is the same shape after feeding as it was before. If your nipple is pinched or compressed, your baby may not have had a deep enough latch. This makes it harder for baby to remove milk and can be painful for you. If a latch is painful for more than 30 to 60 seconds, unlatch baby and try again. It may not seem like your baby is getting very much milk, but remember that your baby is born with a tiny stomach about the size of a marble. Within the first two weeks, it will grow to the size of a ping pong ball, and then even larger to the size of a chicken egg. For comparison, your stomach is about the size of a softball. As baby's stomach grows, they will start to take more and more milk, and your body will increase milk production to keep up. Often, babies will wake up as soon as you lay them down, usually after falling asleep at the breast. Then they will fall right back to sleep once you start to feed them again. This commonly happens at night when you are tired and trying to put your baby to bed after feedings. It can be an exhausting cycle, and you might wonder if you are making enough milk. Most of the time, your milk supply is fine. Your baby just hasn't changed from light to deep sleep yet. When your baby is in light sleep, you might notice twitchy movements and noises and changes in their breathing pattern, and they will wake up easily. If you lay your baby down in this stage, they will likely wake up within a few minutes and act hungry. During deep sleep, babies will appear relaxed and will not move much. Their breathing will be calm and steady, and they might make sucking movements with their mouth. This is the best time to lay your baby down. To help your baby switch from light to deep sleep, Try holding your baby for 15 to 30 minutes after feeding or ask someone else to hold them. You will probably notice your breasts filling up with milk within the first week after your baby is born. If your breasts get so full that you have trouble getting milk out, this is called engorgement. Engorgement can make it harder for baby to latch and can be uncomfortable for you. To prevent engorgement, nurse baby at least every two to three hours and allow them to finish nursing on one breast before offering them the other. If you are having trouble latching baby to a very full breast, 
you can try a technique called reverse pressure softening. This helps to soften the nipple and surrounding area, allowing milk to flow and helping baby get a deep latch. Use your fingertips to apply firm but gentle pressure on the areola toward your chest. If everything is going normally with breastfeeding, try not to pump during the first two weeks. If your breasts are extremely full and feel as hard as your forehead, baby is not able to latch, and or you are feeling pain, try pumping for a few minutes, removing just enough milk to relieve the pressure. However, early pumping can make engorgement last longer and might even lead your body to make too much milk. Sometimes, your doctor or other hospital staff might suggest formula for various reasons. As a reminder, formula is rarely necessary for healthy, full-term babies as long as breast milk is available. In lesson one, we learned some of the reasons why formula might be necessary, including you are separated from your baby and unable to remove breast milk, your baby was born prematurely and doesn't yet have the strength to suck on the breast, or you or your baby have an anatomical difference that hinders breastfeeding. For example, if you have had a medical procedure or condition affecting your breast. In most other cases, a healthy baby should not need formula. Ask if you can provide pumped breast milk instead, or ask to see a lactation professional for more guidance. Call a doctor right away. If you have a fever, red streaks on your breast, and or flu-like symptoms. Baby hasn't had a wet diaper in 12 hours or longer. Baby hasn't had a poopy diaper in 24 hours or longer. Baby has a temperature above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Spring is about to have her first baby. Let's hear about what she's done to prepare to breastfeed. I did conversation with my doctor about breastfeeding and she definitely explained to me everything about breastfeeding, the benefits, the vitamins she can take and um, it's good for her body too because uh, the benefit of the breastfeeding, one of these, uh, my baby cannot take uh, too much disease because of the vitamins my breastfeeding giving to the baby. So I choose it because my mother did it to me too. <laughs> Now that your baby is almost here, you may be feeling a combination of excitement and nervousness. We hope the information we've shared so far has helped you prepare for your baby's arrival and make a plan for feeding them. And we'll be here to guide and support you every step of the way as you continue your breastfeeding journey. Here are a few things to think about. What concerns do I still have about breastfeeding? Who will I contact if I need help or have questions?